They say the entire cosmos is but the creation of the Supreme Artist. So what each artist seeks to do, he seeks to capture that divinity within his music. My musical journey started when I was about four and a half. My dad took me to one of the maestros who, who lived quite close by called Ustad Ajit Singh Matlashi, who's one of the grandmasters of Jodi. And along with my tuition of tabla, I started Jodi as well at the same time from him. comes to history of Jodi, the original name of it was called Urdmuk, meaning facing the heavens. After it was modified from the shape of a pakawaj, when it was cut, it was actually um, further enhanced so you could play both sides and then after that was, it was famously named Jodi after that. And it became a, a dominant instrument around the Punjab region. Um, it was also adapted by the Sikh Gurus after that to be used in Kirtan and um, they gave it a blessing where they said that without this instrument Kirtan is actually incomplete. As an accompaniment instrument, in, especially in Thrupad, it's, it's slightly different from the Khayal style of doing Sangat. Because you, you gotta you gotta match everything there and then while that cycle is ongoing inside you. Whichever beat cycle it could be 14, 12, 16, 10 and a half, it, it, it doesn't really matter. But you gotta match everything there and then, whatever that person is doing. When it comes to tabla, the hand structure of tabla is, is more concentrated on the kinar, so, so from this side. With jodi or pahawaj, it's, it's more concentrated from this side. So it, it, it is a totally different technique of playing and it's an open-handed way of playing. So there's no, um, there's less musicality when it comes to the baya, because you, you, you can't actually take out the tones, there's just ga or ka, there's just two different sounds but the um, the mastery of it the it has such a, a, a majestic presence to it 
So that, that's something really amazing. So it has the grandness of a pakawaj, but the speed of a tabla. Whenever you're practicing, something has to be played. Whichever thing you're concentrating on the most, it's got to be played thousands of times until it becomes your muscle memory. Once it becomes your muscle memory, you've got to play it thousands of times again until it starts to become spiritual. Once that happens, I, th I think it starts to become musical after that. When it comes to composition, it's based upon three things. The beauty of it, the mathematics, and then at the end, the, the spirituality of it. it. It could be telling a certain story. Like for instance, in beauty, it could, it could be a very simple word. <laughs> It, it, it could be something very simple like that or a little bit um, a little bit more complicated. When it comes to something mathematically complicated, it's, it's the gapping system that you have. So, that will repeat three times. So, that, that's just a little example. I mean, there's like thousands of comp compositions that, that, that you could actually say at this point, but um, it's, it's just the first one that came into my head now. And then when it comes to spirituality, there's always uh, compositions that have hidden meanings, hidden, hidden Sanskrit words and they could have the ustati or the, you could say, the, the devotion of a, of a certain goddess or a god, like a, a small composition. Um, so this has the ustati or the devotion of Lord Shiv. So there can be compositions like this as well. Gangang Ganapati Gajamukamangala, the ticket, the ticket, the ticket, Tuntun Tatata, Jejagavan, the Navakrashun, the Dani Data, we're going to have a Shubakar and a Daganata, the Maket, the Maket, the Maket, the Daranga, 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 the
when it comes to specifically to Banaras, the style of playing, one of the unique points that they have is the the rila ang and the bant that they play. The lakari of and upaj that they do is, is absolutely amazing. Some <coughs> some Quranas, there's certain um, technical beauties that they have that other Qurani don't possess. Like in Delhi, they have the most some of the most amazing kaidas. Uh, Lucknow have some amazing guts that they have in, in that karana. But as as a as a good tabla player, I would say it's it's important to understand all these different different karanas and take good parts from them. But at the same time, even though you're learning you're learning these different different ways, you've got to somehow carve out your own way out of all this as well and um, come out with your own unique way of playing. When it comes to learning, um, it, it, it's a two-way thing really. It's the teacher himself shouldn't have those expectations from a student that, oh, you know what, my student has to do this for me, he has to do that for me, I'm I have to make him pay my mortgage, I have to make him do this, I have to make him go and pick up my kids or whatever. Those kind of expectations, that in this kind of country, it doesn't work because you, you can't do that. Maybe in India, it, it would have worked about 100 years back. But not now. Um, then, at the same time, the student has to be humbly enough to just leave all the thinking to his teacher as well. So it, it is a two-way thing. The teacher has to be um, very sincere to his student, and the student has to be very sincere to his teacher. Whatever isn't shared is lost. To pass on these kind of compositions, it's it, it should be absolute paramount for any teacher now at this point. Because there's there's a lot of compositions that have been lost through the ages as well. There's a, a lot of big masters from around India, UK, where I've. I've done my best to like take as many compositions as I can of them. Uh, but at the same time, I'm really trying to chuck it back into the communities again. You know, some people, they they get up to like become a certain musician or they, they want to become a teacher. But in actual fact, what happens is that the actual field chooses you. 
I, I, I didn't really choose to be a, 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 a performer. I, I, I love to do it because I, um, you know, the, the, the passion for it, as in just, just sitting in my room for me was, was enough, to be honest. But then when some of the masters heard me, they, they wanted me to go out there and not want me to waste it. The transition between performing and teaching, I, th I think it, it should go hand in hand. That, um, <clears throat> that your passion for playing should be at the same time as teaching as well. That you need to be passing on those ideas as well at the same time. I think I think students should be encouraged straight away to go on stage and start performing because you know if, if you don't make those mistakes you won't ever find out you've got to kind of chuck them into the deep end so they start finding out themselves how to do it and then their own intuition will tell them the rest <laughs> Playing a solo and accompanying, they, they are two different things. Solo, it all depends on you. 
It's like uh, one of the, the great maestros, Pandit Anindur Chatterjee, he goes, look, playing solo is like having a bachelor life. You're free you know, to do whatever you want. And uh, he goes, when you're accompanying, it's like, it's like being married. You, there's a lot of sacrificing that you've got to do. So when, when you're accompanying, you gotta, you're going to be really listening to the person, what, what they're actually doing, and try and match what they're doing. But at the same time, you can't overtake what they're doing as well, because they are the, the main artist at that point, and you're accompanying, so you, you, you have to remember that. In any kind of field, if we don't go to the, the technicality of it, we, we won't understand it's the, the actual depth of that knowledge until that point then. Everybody wants to, w w whenever they want to learn a certain instrument or, or start singing or, or going to a, a certain philosophy or a certain, um, a, a certain subject, they want the answers straight away. They, they want the easiest technique and the quickest way to get there. But with, with these fine arts, you, you do have to sit down. You've got, you got to practice. You've got to, go, you've got to go into depth. It's like looking at something under a microscope. It's a whole new world out there then. talk about music in the Sikh faith, um, it's more so, more, more so to do with Gitan. Um, if, you, if you break Gitan down, the, the, the main component of it is, is Bani, so it's Gurbani. And then Gurbani carries the rag element of it, 
whether you do it in a rag or you do it siddha, but the music element of it is Bani carries it. Um, and this is again, it's in my opinion. Yeah. Um, so Maharaj Di Bani carries Gitan and it carries it in the right direction, in the spiritual direction. Um, music, Sandeep Singh music, like in, in some religions, it's, it's not allowed. It isn't. Because there's a component of it which says it goes towards um, like Gaan. Yeah? And so they, they, they banned it. So what Maharaj did, Maharaj have Bani which control that element. So they make sure, the Bani makes sure that it doesn't go in the wrong direction. So if there's any love in it, it's directed towards Malak. It's directed towards Malak. And everything should be in Kirtan is directed towards Malak. So when you do Kirtan, you're primarily, it's the Bani. Bani to see gone there. Your Malak das there. To see all gone there. Your Bani to go there. And to see Maharaj they gone gone there. Maharaj have put Kirtan in this job. They put Kirtan right at the top of everything. So Maharaj can say that Al Jug ne Kirtan pradana Gurmukh Japiye Naya Pyaar. It's one of the easiest forms for somebody to spiritually get elevated. If somebody knows that Kirtan is not good, it's so good, and it makes it it's so much easier. Trying to do it, and the other thing with Kirtan, obviously, Sangat is there, Sangat can join in. You know, there's different styles of Kirtan, um, you know, the, and in Sikhi, we're very fortunate we can do Kirtan with Raj, Santi Saj, we can do it very Siddha, very simple. Sangat, yeah, and and we've got every opportunity to go through every different style of it, yeah? so we're very, very fortunate. I think, from what I, I guess, meditation is about um, silencing the mind. Meditation is about um, trying to forget the noise that's around you. Meditation is about concentrating on that one point. Um, and that's exactly what Keaton does. From experience, Kirtan is probably the one and only time that I will forget any duk suk around. So whatever, if I have duk 
at home, at work, in my general life, when you do Kirtan, at the point when you're doing Kirtan, all that is forgot. So, like meditation, it's, it, it's, it gives you a focal point, it gives you um, a point to kind of go to. कीर्तन ही होवे जदों कीर्तन करदे आ ओदों ऐसा कोई सज्जन होना चाहिदा जदों कीर्तन करदे बशक पीछे बैठे आ बशक नाल बैठे आ संगत विच बैठे आ पर यू हैव टू हैव समवन हु इज ऑलरेडी एलिवेटेड टू द राइट लेवल हु विल देन टेक द कीर्तनी टू द राइट लेवल I mean, we're, we're very, very, very fortunate. Sometimes I think too fortunate that we've done Sangat and we've heard Gyani Ji, Gyani Morg Singh. Huh? I mean, me personally, I couldn't talk about Ethan without mentioning Dene. Um, so they have given us a foundation of Ethan. And we, 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 we should use that foundation to help elevate ourselves when doing Kirtan. <laughs>